you are the great teacher. We come to you because we need to hear from you. We know that we are living the last days of life of the world history. We lose the loved one and there in that area, we have no friends who have lost loved one. But we want to thank you for the blessing. As we read your word, as we study your word, I pray that you will use me to give an encouragement to my brothers and to my sisters. And I pray that you stand tall so that your children will see you and you alone and hide me behind, behind the cross, I pray. In your precious name, amen. So what is the ceiling? What does the ceiling mean? Any student of the Bible, especially the book of Revelation, know that God has a seal. And if God has a seal, the enemy of God also have the seal. But what is the ceiling? Can I suggest to you that the ceiling is a process. The ceiling is a process, is a spiritual process. Is a ceiling, it's a, it's a process that is invisible to our own eyes. But it's a, it is now, it is underway now, right now as I'm talking to you. And ceiling, that spiritual process will end soon. But it will end at the close of the probation. It will end at the close of the probation. And that ceiling, it is not collective. That ceiling is individual. In other words, it relates to me personally. It relates to you individually. And, and it for each person. We know when it starts but we don't know when it ends. The ceiling starts at my conversion. As soon as I'm converted, the day, the very day I'm converted, the very, the very day you are converted, it is when the ceiling starts. And it will end either when I die or when you die, or it will end at the end, at the close of the probation. When we believe as Seventh-day Adventists, when the investigative judgment ends. And since the, the ceiling is invisible, it is invisible. As Seventh-day Adventists, we know that the judgment has started in heaven in 1844. 1844 is for us, Seventh day Adventists, a very important date. It's the date when people were waiting for Jesus to come on earth, but we know through the spirit of prophecy that Jesus has gone to another part, apartment of the century. And since then, since that date, the ceiling has started. Since that date, the judgment has started. And we call it the investigative judgment. So the ceiling is invisible. The work of ceiling is accomplished by angels. They are working here on earth. God's angel and the Holy Spirit are working for sealing, 
his children. We know also, my brothers and sisters, and I have made no apology, and as Adventists, we should make no apology about the fact that we still believe in the Ten Commandments. Some people want us to make things to which to make clear that no, we are we we put emphasis on the Ten Commandments. No, my brothers and sisters, I believe that I'm not saved by law. I believe that you and I, all of us, we are saved by grace through the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. But at the same time, we believe that the judgment in heaven is based on the Ten Commandments. So the Ten Commandments, which are the transcript of God's character, are the base, the foundation of the old judgment. How can we judge without law? Before I became a minister, I was a lawyer. I'm a lawyer by profession. I know how law is important. We cannot build a case if there is no law. So the judgment is based on the 10 commandment of God. And the Bible says in Exodus chapter 31, verse 18, that God wrote the 10 commandment with his own fingers. So it's important. As Seventh-day Adventists, waiting for the Lord to come, to value all the Ten Commandments, all the Ten Commandments. But we also know there's among the Ten Commandments, there's one commandment that is central which is central to the, to, to the Ten Commandments. That is the Fourth Commandment, the commandment concerning the Sabbath. And it is also, and we know that the commandment concerning the Sabbath is the seal of God. But please turn your Bible with me to the book of Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7. And I'm reading. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four wings of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree, and I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the tree, till we have sealed the servant of our Lord, of our God, in the four heads. I would like to suggest to you, my brothers and sisters, that the sealing that we see in Revelation chapter 7 has a relation with, has a connection with what we see in the book of 
Ezekiel chapter nine, and this is your homework. As you, and I know you are Bible students. I know you are Bible students. I would like to encourage you to go and read the old chapter of Ezekiel chapter nine. But the sealing will take place and it is taking place before Jesus returns. And the ceiling is now taking place. I'm trying to work on my, I'm trying to work on my, my PowerPoint. I, I, I don't know what to do. Uh, did you anything to... oh, so if you press if you press the arrow button on the bottom left that's right okay thank arrow. you so much yeah. oh. some, of, some of us are not technical so <laughs> sorry Pastor. thank you so much all right so as we saw in the book of tribulation chapter seven we know that the ceiling pastor gave me 30 minutes so i'm trying to i need to work towards the time pastor I'll try to keep the time you gave me. Um, we saw that this, the seal, the seal, the seal present ownership. But as we, as you read the Bible, and and I really want to encourage you, and I, 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 as a former um, a former director of the Stumble Press, I would like to encourage you to 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 get this book. And this book is called Preparation for the Final Crisis. Now, my brothers and sisters, the final crisis before Jesus comes is not coronavirus. The final crisis before Jesus comes, it is not Black Lives Matter. The final crisis before Jesus comes is bigger than that. And I want to repeat again, those things as important as they are, they, they're not, they, they are not linked to our salvation. Hello, somebody. They, 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 I would like you to be, if possible, to purchase this book. If, for those who have, I really want to commend you. For those who do not have, please make an effort to get this book, which is called Preparation for the Final Crisis. So when you read the book and we read the Bible, you know that the mark, the, 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 the ceiling is to protect us. It is to protect God's children from what the devil and human are trying to do before the Lord Jesus come. Before the Lord Jesus come. But what is the seal of God? What is the seal of God? Now, if you turn your Bible to the book of to the book of Exodus, chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. You know from verse 8 to 11 that the seal of God is in that commandment. Let me read it quickly. And it says, verse 20. Chapter 20, verse 8, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall you labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy maidservant, thy men servant, or thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gate. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in it, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Now, Sister White says that because of 
what is put in this commandment. In this commandment, we have the name of our God. In this commandment, we have the title of God. And the name is the Lord. His title, he's the creator. His territory is heaven and earth. It's only in the fourth commandment that you have those three elements of the seal. Only in the 10th commandment that you found the three elements of the seal. And that's what made that commandment so special. But why is the commandment so special? If you break any other, any commandment, any non other commandment, before you come to God on that day, on the Sabbath day, you won't have peace in your mind. How can you come and worship God on the Sabbath day when you know that you have broken the first, the second, the third, the fifth, the six, the seven, the eight, the ninth, and the ten commandments. So all the commandments are related and closely linked. And the fourth commandment is central. And that's why Sister White presents this commandment as the seal of the living God as the seal of the living God. So in the book testimony for the church, she said, the Sabbath helps to give the Ten Commandments their true meaning. The Sabbath was placed in the Ten Commandments in the Decalogue as a seal of the living God, pointing out the law giver and making known his rule, his right to rule. Therefore, the Sabbath is a sign of a relationship between God and his people, serving as a test of their loyalty to him. Now listen to what she said here. And I hope each one will pay attention to it. The mission of the Seventh-day Adventist Church can be described as presenting the law of God as a test of character and the seal of the living God. And so my brothers, if the Sabbath if the Sabbath is the seal of the living God, what is the seal that the angel will place on the foreheads that we saw in Revelation chapter 7, verse 2 to 3? The seal to be placed on the forehead is the mark which angels but not human eyes can read. But angels are putting on the mark of every believer for one day and very soon. The destroying angel will see this mark of redemption. In the Bible commentary, volume seven, it's Sister Wise said that the intelligent mind has seen the seal of the cross of Calvary in the Lord adopted sons and daughters. This seal is to be given to those only who make the necessary preparation. And I want to underline the necessary preparation for my brothers and sisters. Now is the time 
for us to be prepared for difficult times are ahead of us. Now is the time for you and for me to get prepared. That's the reason why I'm insisting on that book, Preparation for the Final Crisis. A final crisis is about to strike the universe. And we need to be prepared for that. And in early writing, page 38, Sister White says, in his mercy, God has commissioned four angels to hold the wings of strife, as we read in the book of Revelation chapter seven. In his mercy, God has commissioned four angels to hold the wings of strife so that God's people may have time to do this preparation for receiving the seal on their foreheads. For had none for that, if he had none for the angels who are holding the four wings, the world would have been destroyed. But God in his grace sent his angels and their duty, their job, their mission is to hold the wings, to hold the tribulation, to hold the persecution, to hold the wings of strife that are about to hit the universe. And want God's people to prepare to receive a seal on their foreheads, on their foreheads. Look what she says in the book, the, the thing that she wrote in Review and Herald in 1887, 1887. She said, a distinction evidently was to be made between people who observe the Sabbath and the true people who observe the Sabbath. And look what she said. She said, unfortunately, many Adventists did not take advantage of the wind holding delay when they first learned about it. And in 1847, she said, after more than 40 years, Sister Y was frustrated and she wrote, brethren, how long before we will be ready for God? Already 40 years after 1844. Today, today, over 170 years, the question still stands. Are we ready? Are, is the peop, are the people of God ready? In the book, Sons and Daughters of God, page 340, 342, Sister White says, talking about preparation, she said, the more we study the life of Christ, the more Christ-like will become. And that is individual. It is not collective. My brother and sister, we are not going to save as a group. We're not going to save as a church. We'll be saved individually. Individually. And that's important, that's why we should not follow the crowd. And my heart pains when I see Adventists following the crowd. We just follow a movement. When we hear anything about Black, Black Lives Matter, we follow 
the movement. We should not follow the crowd. It is between us and God. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that we should not work for justice and social justice. But I'm saying that there's something more, it's more important, there's something more important than that. What is more important is to be ready. To be ready. Look what she says. The promised outcome is beyond our highest expectation. Holiness of character. And that is testimony to, to ministers. And she said, indeed, indeed, the cleansing of the soul temple for every defilement will produce characters without one spot and stain. Because we are waiting for the laws to come, each one needs to examine himself individually. And that is, we need to search our soul. Should not be, no sin should be there. Look, the four objectives, the four obje objectives that the ceilings will accomplish. How many objectives? Four. Four objectives. Objective number one, the stealing will fix in the life of each individual. The stealing will set, will, will fix in my life, in your life. The principle of God's law. And the principle, the main principle of God's law is love. As we all know, Love in the first four commandments. Love in the, the next six commandments. Love is important. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples. Love. You can never love. You cannot have love in your heart and be racist. You cannot have love in your heart and hold grudges. Love, the fixing, the sealing on our foreheads will fix in my life, in your life, the principle of God's law. But then the second objective, the second objective, it makes faithful Sabbath observance possible for those who are sealed, as we meet apostasy and fierce persecution, and my brother and my sisters, I don't want to be a prophet to do. The reality is everything is being put in place for persecution to start. It will start very soon. But when it starts, because we have gone through the ceiling, we will remain faithful to the Sabbath observance, even in the midst of persecution. Third objective, it prepares us to pass unharmed through the times of trouble, because the time of trouble is coming soon. And we will be able to live above sin while we are without a mediator for my brothers and sisters. When Christ's work is finished in the heavenly sanctuary, it will be a time when nobody will be our intercessor. During that time, those who are sealed will be able to live without sin. And number four, it preserves us from the final destruction. Just like the angel of destruction went around in Egypt to kill the firstborn, 
those who have the blood of Jesus on the lintels of their house were saved. Those who have the seal of God will escape the final destruction. So Sister White says, those who receive God's seals upon their foreheads are God's commandment keeping people. Because the Bible says in Revelation chapter 14, verse 12, here is the patience of the saint. Here are they that keep the commandment of God and the faith of Jesus. The sins are removed. They have the wedding garment. They're obedient and they're faithful to God's commandment. But I want to read that one for you so that you understand. Not all Adventists, not all Seventh-day Adventists will have the seal of God. Look what she says in the book Testimony for the Church, Volume 5. She so I says, many who teach the truth, hey, pastors, Sabbath school directors, some elders, many who teach the truth will not receive the seal of God. Why? Because even though they had the light of truth, even though they know the will of the master, even though they understood every point, their work, they had not corresponding their work. In other words, what they know, what they teach, is not what they really live. The experience is different from what they are teaching. Oh Lord, forgive. Oh Lord, forgive me. Look what she says. Many will not receive the seal of God because they don't bear the fruit of righteousness. They are in the church. They hold position in the church. But before God, they're not worthy. And those who do not have the seal of God will have to face destruction. They will be cut down by the destroying weapon. So the angels, the three angels' message is there. But let me quickly see with you. When the sealing occur, and how long would the sealing last? Well, Sister Wise says in the book, Early, Christ, Early Writings, in page 58, she said, the sealing time is very short and soon will be over. Now is the time. Why the four angels are holding the wings? Now is the time to make our calling and election sure. Now is the time, my brothers and my sisters, now is the time to make our calling and our election sure. It's gonna be a very short time. I wish I could have more time to talk about it. I wish I could have more time to expand about it on that. But my brother, the time is gonna be very short. Look what she said, why says in the book Testimony, volume chapter five. She said, when this time of trouble comes, every case is decided. There is no longer probation, no longer mercy for the impenitent. The seal of the living God is upon God's children. When that comes, as when she said, no prayer will be answered. So the seal is coming. The time the revelation talks about it. The seal of God is about to take place. And we know that the seal of God is Sabbath. We also know that people are trying to make another Sabbath. Another Sabbath. And I don't want to, I don't have time to emphasize the fact. 
But on one hand, you have God's Sabbath. On the other hand, there is another Sabbath, and that is not from God. That is not from God. And we know because of time, I will have to go very quickly. And in May 31st, in 1998, the previous Pope sent a message to all the bishops, to all the clergy, to all the faithful of the Roman Catholic Church, that they should keep what they call God's law. He want them to keep God's law holy. And what is that God's law they're talking about? It Talking about Sunday. Sunday. And I can tell you, my brother, things are happening. Our eyes are not seeing that things are happening very soon. Very soon. Sunday, which is called, which they call God's law, will have to be there. Look what the Pope says. The Pope says, and I quote him, the Lord's day, our Sunday, had to be accorded special attention. They say that. They're talking about Sunday, which had to have special attention. And, 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 and because of time, I, don't, I, I can't go. I, I wish I could tell you more about it. I wish I could tell you more about it. But 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 look look what the Pope say. Listen to what he said here. He said, Sunday is a day which is at the very heart of the Christian faith, Christian life, from the beginning of my pontificate. I have not ceased to repeat, do not be afraid. Open wide the doors to Christ. In every way today, I will strongly urge every person to rediscover Sunday. Do not be afraid to give time to Christ. Yes, let us open our time so that we can cast light upon it and give direction. He is the one who knows the secret of time, secret of eternity, and he gives us this his day, a new gift to his life. And this is, this is the Pope talking about Sunday. Talking about Sunday. If you did not, if you did not know, they were, they were going to have a meeting um, on, on, on um, let me quickly, yes. Look what the Pope say, for example. He says, the true Christians must worship on Sunday. True Christians. So the question is, what about those who are not worship on Sunday? Are the true Christians? Are the true Christians? Very recently, in, two, in 2000, 2018, Pope Francis and President Trump met and they decided to work together to defend human freedom. And what do they mean by human freedom? They decide to work together to implement the Sunday law. Already, already in 2012, as I mentioned earlier, the son Pope Benedict said that we need to, they need to defend Sunday, the day of rest. One must defend human freedom, human freedom. Recently, recently, world leaders, they say they just, they want to look, they want to look for a, a moral leader. And look what he says here. Not only is Donald Trump looking to Pope Francis for moral leadership, but the European Union, the European Union, people may not be happy with me, but I'm gonna say it nevertheless. I want to thank God that British 
has left the European Union. Not only is Donald Trump looking to Pope Francis for moral leadership, but European Union leaders are looking to Pope Francis to guide them. In an article entitled, Divine Intervention, European Union are calling for the Pope to revive, to lead, to lead. And it is happening now. You did not know, but, but there was going to be a global event. And that global event was set to take place on, at the Vatican in May, 2020. It did not take place because of coronavirus. But the, leader, the Pope has summoned all the leaders to meet together so that they can start something new. Look, this is simply astonishing, amazing. The Vatican has just made an audacious overturn for religious unity. A very, a very, a few short weeks ago, Pope Francis released in a video in which he announced an invitation to global religious leaders to come together to sign what he called a new global path. My brothers and sisters, my brothers and sisters, everything is being put in place. Everything is put in place. So on one hand, you have the seal of God, which is the Sabbath. On the other hand, you have the mark of the beast, which is Sunday. And I don't want us to be sleeping. I want you, the only time we can be, we can be educated if we read this, this scriptural prophecy, that book that I have here, the book, Preparation for the Final Crisis and the Last Day Event. Look what Sister Y says. She said, the seal of the living God is being placed on those who consciously keep the Sabbath of the Lord. Those who receive the seal of the living God will be protected in the time of trouble. My prayer for you and for me, myself, this morning, as we are preparing, I'm encouraging you, my brothers and sisters, to read, to read and to be educated. Only those who have been sealed will be able to pass successfully through the time of trouble because the time of trouble is soon to come. May God bless us as we are thinking, as we are getting ready, get educated. We should love God and we should not be afraid to be called his children because if we are afraid to be called his children today,